Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Becky. Today I'm going to show you what it's like to buy an entire hog. I purchased this hog from Marion Acres. It's a farm about 40 minutes from me. On this homestead, we don't have the space or I don't really have the desire, honestly, to raise my own pigs or pork, but I am passionate about buying local pasture-raised meats whenever possible. And by buying it from a local rancher, I can do that. I can get myself some really good quality meat and I can also support the local economy. In this video, I'm gonna show you what I got when I purchased an entire hog. I'm gonna break down the cost. I'm gonna break down what it's like to buy an entire hog from a local rancher because it's a little bit different than going out to your grocery store. And at the end, we're actually gonna cook up some brats. I haven't actually tasted any of this meat yet because I was waiting to do it with you. So at the very end, we're gonna cook up some dinner and we're gonna give it a try. We got 14 packages of bacon. These packages are a little less than a pound each. So there's a little less than 14 pounds of bacon here. These are four ham hocks. We didn't actually get any ham because my husband and I don't eat a lot of ham, but I like to make red beans and rice and ham hocks makes delicious red beans. And that's what these are for. We got two tenderloins. I just, dis well, didn't just discover, but I really like cooking tenderloins. So I'm glad I got these. We have some pork heart and pork liver. I'm gonna freeze dry these and I'm gonna make them into dog treats. We have some leaf lard. Leaf lard is the cleanest fat that you can get off an animal. You can get it off cows, which would be tallow, or pigs, which is leaf lard. That's typically the lard that you render when you, when you wanna make pastry, like biscuits or pie crust or things like that, and you wanna use the cleanest fat on the animals because there's no meat around it, so you get the cleanest flavor. So that's what the leaf lard is for. We'll render this together. We got two packages of baby back ribs and two packages of spare ribs. There's only two of each on the animal, that's why you only get two. Two packages of pork loin roasts. I saw a video of a butcher who actually stuffed this with sausage and rolled it up and then roasted it. And that is why I asked for these instead of it being cut into pork chops. I thought it'd be really cool to try making it into a stuffed roast for one of them. And then maybe the other one I'll eventually cut into pork chops. I'm not exactly sure. I wanted them whole so I had an option to try something like that. We got four pretty large packages of pork butt. This is what you use to make pulled pork, and that is why I got this. These are actually very big packages. If I had realized, I probably would have asked them to cut them a little bit smaller because that's a lot of meat for just Josh and I, but maybe I'll try canning it because I've never actually canned any meat before, and I've heard that pork butt canned is really good because it basically shreds it, and then all you have to do is add barbecue sauce. We got 13 packages of bratwurst with four brats in each package. So this is what we're gonna cook up for dinner tonight together. In here, we got 21 one pound packages of Italian sausage. And over here, we got 19 packages of one pound packages of breakfast sausage. And last but not least, we got a package of bones. These are gonna be for the dogs. So how does it actually look like when you go to buy a whole hog? Well, first what you do, you typically need to put a deposit down and that deposit goes toward your final price. So my deposit for a whole hog at Marion Acres was $200 and that price per pound was $4.50. That price has gone up now when I just looked on their website today to $4.75 and that's one thing, buying your meat like this, you're locking in that price and you're gonna get a better price because this amount of meat is gonna last Josh and I a year and a half at least, if not two years, because we have a freezer full of chicken and beef as well. So this isn't our only meat source. So I spent $200 on the deposit and my price per pound was $4.50. When they butchered this animal, they clean the guts out, they skin it and they hang it. And that is called the hanging weight. And I paid $4.50 for the hanging weight, which was 149 pounds. So when my pork was actually butchered and the hanging weight was tallied, I had an additional $489 that I had to pay. So total, I paid for this pork $670.50. That was the total price for the rancher to raise this pork for me. Now, I have to say that if I was to put an infrastructure to raise a pig and buy the pig and grow the pig and feed the pig, that's a huge investment too. So for me, I would rather pay a local rancher to do that work for me who has the infrastructure. Once you pay the rancher to raise the animal, then you have to pay the butcher to actually butcher and process this meat. There is typically a fee to have the animal actually butchered, and that fee for me was $80, and then I have to pay to have the animal processed and packaged for me and made into things like sausage and bacon and ham because that is an additional step. 
I paid my butcher 70 cents to have this animal processed and packaged for me. I get this meat from the ranch to the butcher into my freezer. I paid a total of $873 and you give the butcher your cutting instructions. It's taken me, this is the fourth hog I've purchased, and it takes a little bit of time to figure out what cuts you like, what cuts you don't like, what you gravitate towards. When it comes to your cutting instructions, what I found the best advice is, is look at what you purchase, and those are the things you should have your butcher make for you. I have found over doing this four times, when it comes to pork, we typically eat the most bacon, sausage, and pulled pork. When I first started doing this, I would get every single cut, but we don't eat every single cut, like ham steaks, and I can't even think of all the cuts that you can get, because there's a lot of different things you can do when you buy a whole hog, and I found that we weren't eating those, because I don't typically buy those at the grocery store, I don't typically cook those, so this is why I've decided to have it processed the way I had it processed, but just know for you, look at your groceries, see what you buy, and if you buy a lot of ham steaks, then maybe you should have a lot more ham steaks processed as opposed to what I did. One thing about when you buy from a local rancher is you're locking in that price. Food prices are skyrocketing right now, and I now have meat that I've purchased at this price for at least the next year and a half. I don't think we're gonna be able to go through this pork any sooner than a year and a half, so maybe two years. So I think $4.50 is a great price. Now this is more expensive typically than what you're gonna spend maybe at the grocery store for some of these same products, but this is a premium product. This meat was raised outside on pasture, organically fed, and this is just a higher quality product that I'm willing to spend. If I was to buy this quality product at the grocery store, I would spend way more money. Let's get dinner going. I have these sweet potato fries. I'm gonna cook sweet potato fries and the brats. I might make some like honey mustard sauce to dip these in. I've never made these before. I randomly saw them when I was doing one of my grocery hauls and I picked them up, so we're gonna try them together. I've had a lot of you guys say when you watch that grocery haul that these are really good. I'm also gonna fry up some onions and peppers to go along with the brats. I have some buns. I don't think I'm gonna eat a bun, but my husband probably will want a bun on his brat. Almost any time I bake anything, I like to put parchment paper down because I'm not a fan of having to wash cookie sheets. So that's what I'm doing. I also tried to put two packages of these fries on one cookie sheet, but then I decided to actually read the directions and it said one layer thick. So I pulled out another cookie sheet and I figured since this was the first time I'm cooking them, I better cook them to the cooking directions. After that, I put two pans on the stove to warm up. These are some peppers from the garden. I slice them up. I love having sliced peppers in the freezer because it just saves an extra step. So we're gonna fry these up. I put a little bit of avocado oil in each one of these pans. I sliced up some onions as well. These are onions I actually purchased from a local farmer that I used to be a part of their CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. And I bought probably 40 pounds of onions from him in August and they're still looking really well. I don't have any issues with them getting going bad or anything like that. I now am putting the brats in my cast iron. I'm pretty excited to try these. I put a lid on it because those brats were completely raw and I turned the heat down to really low because it's gonna take some time to actually heat those brats through. And now I'm putting my sweet potato fries in the oven. I think I mentioned earlier I was gonna do a honey mustard but I figured that I have these mama lily peppers. It would be really good to make an aioli with those. So that is what we are gonna do today. I pulled out some mayonnaise, lemon, salt, garlic, mama lily's peppers. I zested the lemon first and then I juiced the lemon. I put it into the container that I figured I would store it in the refrigerator with so I didn't have to mess up another bowl since I don't need you know to look nice or anything. It's just Josh and I eating tonight. This is some garlic that I grew. One of you in the comment section had recommended using my microplane to just grade the garlic with the skins on and all and it works really well too. As long as you can hold the garlic, the peel just comes right off. Now, an aioli is just a fancy word for a mayonnaise sauce type thing, and I like to make a dipping sauce. You can kind of make it with whatever you want. Here, I have lemon juice, salt, mama lily's peppers. These things are incredible if you've never tried them. They're a little bit vinegary. They're not spicy at all. I chop them up pretty fine, and I'm gonna put them in here. When you're making a sauce like this, it's really good to have usually a creamy element, a vinegary element, that's where the lemon came in, or not vinegary, but kind of tart element, I should say. I'm gonna mix this together. You could do the same kind of thing with mustard instead of the peppers, or capers instead of the peppers, or 
anything that would kind of give you that zing that you want. I tried it and it was a little too mayonnaise y so I did add a little bit of Greek yogurt just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna give this a taste test. That's delicious. I love having a dipping sauce. This dinner is coming together in just a matter of about 10, maybe 15 minutes. I wanted to show you what the peppers look like because they were frozen. They cook up really nice. I can't really tell a difference if I use fresh peppers or frozen peppers when I saute them. Give these fries a taste test with our aioli we made. I love sweet potato fries, but I usually make them myself. So this is definitely a treat to have a convenience thing like this. Mmm. I like that. I think I like homemade better. But this just took two seconds. Josh is down here. He's gonna get himself a plate and we're gonna taste it together. I made up an aioli here. You can use that or ketchup and mustard, whatever you want. Give this a try. What's in it? Mayo, lily peppers, garlic, and some lemon. And then we have some sweet potato fries. So that's Josh's plate. All right, let's give this a taste test. I'm not gonna put any sauce on it first because I just wanna try it. I cooked it all the way through, which is good. Oh wow, that's really good. Mm, mm-hmm. Very savory. Mm-hmm. That's a good broth. That's really mm. good. The texture of the meat is really good. Mm -hmm. You can actually feel the texture of the meat. It's not just like um, a big mash or something. And there's now big, a lot of big chunks of like fat, like yeah. some of them have. The cubed fat you find in them. Yeah, that is delicious. We got 13 of these packages. Oh, nice. And it's super savory, like you said, just extremely savory. Is it good with the aioli? Kind of like the mm -hmm. brightness, the citrusy. It balances out, out really well. Yeah, yeah. The peppers, this will, are... the peppers are from the garden. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish getting my plate ready for dinner and my husband and I are gonna go sit down and we're gonna enjoy dinner together. I'm super excited about this whole hog. I think we're really going to enjoy it. If this is something you've been interested in doing, I hope this video helped kind of clarify a little bit how the process works. It is a little bit different than just going out to your grocery store and picking up some meat. And so there definitely is a learning curve when it comes to buying from a local rancher in your area. If this is something you've been interested in doing but you're not sure where to start in finding a food producer in your area, there's a great website called localharvest.org and it's basically a search engine for finding food producers in your area. Anything from dairy to vegetables to berries to orchards, basically any sort of food producer in your area, they will probably be on localharvest.org and it's a great resource for connecting consumers with food producers. There's also a company called ButcherBox. If buying a whole hog or buying half a cow is not something that's attainable to you at this point because of space or maybe resources, they do grass-fed, grass-finished beef, organic chicken, and cage-free pork. I'm really happy with the quality of their meat, so that might be an option instead of having to go out and buying a whole hog to get some better quality meat than what you might be able to find at the grocery store. I do have a discount code if you wanna shop through my link down in the description box. I hope you guys found this video valuable. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or sharing it with someone if you think someone would be interested in buying a whole hog and kind of what that looks like. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing. I do all sorts of videos on cooking, canning, food preservation, gardening, and all the things. And if you want, in the meantime, between now and my next video comes out, there will be videos that will pop up right here. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you for spending time with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.